Hi everyone! Welcome, 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 welcome to Thursday Connect. Good afternoon, thank you for joining me today. My name is Cherry and it is an honor and a pleasure to be sharing with you this afternoon. It is very cold here in Rome. I don't know where you're watching us from, but please let us know in the chat. How is the weather where you're joining us from right now? Don't forget to also tell us your name and the city that you're joining us from. And also, please don't forget to write in the chat um, a testimony or a prayer request. Also, please let us know if, you know, you have had anything on your heart recently if the holy spirit has put anything on your heart we would love to hear it we would love to pray with you we would love to pray for you um you can also send us an email if you don't feel like sharing in the chat but i hope you do i encourage you to um you can always send us an email or just you know reach out to us on any of our social media platforms so all right let's starts and as i did last week i realized a lot of you really enjoyed the how wow pow chow i'm gonna say that again the how the wow the pow and the chow so a lot of you last week found it really funny and entertaining so i think i'm gonna do it again today before we go into our book study um so remember we're gonna be doing the how which is how are you doing right now and then we're gonna be doing the wow which is you share a um, wow moment from the last week so the last seven days and the pow which is you share a challenging thing that happened last week in the past seven days and then a chow the best thing you ate all week so for me, how I'm doing right now, I'm fine, but it's cold. It's really cold. That's why I'm like all in my thick sweater and my turtleneck and trying to keep warm in this weather. Um, and my wow, a wow moment from last week, the past seven days, would be I got some really amazing, beautiful flowers. I don't know if you all can see this right here really huge and amazing and this was a wow moment for me um i'm very happy and blessed to have received such beautiful flowers um and my pow um something challenging that happened in the past week would be um as i shared last week still the misplaced documents which we're still praying for that so that's still on um and then my child the best thing i've had i've eaten for in the past seven days would be again another dessert you guys i'm very adventurous with my desserts okay i tried a new dessert i don't know what it's called but i assume it's french but it was so good and so refreshing um if i get the name i'm gonna leave that in the chat later on <laughs> but um basically that was my chow so you guys let me know what's your how what's your wow what's your pow and what's your chow um Feel free to engage with us in the chat. Like I said, we're going to be checking the answers. I don't joke about this. I always go back and read what people write, what people leave it, leave in there. I, 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 I celebrate with you. I pray with you all. Um, no matter the time you're joining, if you're joining now, if you're joining this afternoon, if you're joining tomorrow, next week, next month, from whatever time zone, from whatever geographical location you're joining from, it is never too late to engage us it is never too late to join in so i'm just gonna open up with a word of prayer before we dive into our book new normal by john lindell um so let's just open up in prayer father god i thank you for this beautiful day for this beautiful afternoon father god i just pray that everything we discuss here god that you would just take control and we will hear your voice and only your voice god father god let this time that we have set apart to get to get to know you deeper to get to know you more to get to draw closer for you oh god 
Oh God, I just pray for this to be a blessed time that we have set apart, oh God. That whatever we hear today, let it resonate within our minds, within our bodies and our souls. Let it also show, Father God, in our day to day, in our daily lives, oh God. Let it not just be empty words. Let it not just be 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 words that we can't apply. Father, I just pray, I just pray that your, your presence dwells with us, dwells within us. I thank you for those who have joined. I thank you for those who will join, Father God. May we just have a blessed time together as we fellowship. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So remember, we are going to be doing New Normal by John Lindell. And I hope everyone has their study guide as well. Remember, it's really good to have both. Um, so we're going to be beginning a new chapter today, chapter five, which is called letting go. Um, if any of you didn't have the opportunity yet to join us on this book study, it is not too late. You can go back and in the Thursday Connects playlist on our Facebook, on our YouTube, you can always rewatch past videos. Last week I completed chapter four um from new normal from this book which was um thank you for the memories which is talking about remembering our past but not living there and now we're gonna start a completely new chapter chapter five um titled letting go and i am gonna start by reading the verse on the first page, which is Joshua chapter 5, verse 9 in the NIV. And it says, Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. So the place has been called Gilgal to this day. And let's start by reading in page 73, page 73 from the first and the second paragraph. And it says, from New Normal, there is a familiar pattern to change. God nudges us towards the new normal. But upon, upon our return, we can feel that something is missing. We are excited about the land, but we can find ourselves wondering if we have all we need. You guys ever have that feeling where, you know, you rush out of the house and you're like, do I have my keys? Do I have this? Do I have that? That's that's kind of what, what it is. It, 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 feels like sometimes when when we're on the road to change you you are excited about it but it feels like do I have everything I need am I equipped um do I have all the tools do I have the right character am I ready will I ever be ready so the author is really doing a good job about pointing this out to us and he says in reality in the early stages of coming into the new normal we rarely need to add anything. We rarely need to add anything. But there is almost always something we hold on to that we need to subtract. The routine of life can numb us to the need for change. Besides familiarity, brings with it a comfort, like a favorite pair of shoes. We would like a new normal. We just aren't ready until we let go of a few things. I'm going to repeat that again. We would like a new normal. We just aren't ready until we let go of a few things. Now, I remember sharing at the end of last week's message. Like I said, you can go back and rewatch it. About just really leaning in and trusting God to refine you and to 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 purge you of everything that 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 wants to hold you back and keep you in the past. So, now we see that threat as we're moving from chapter to chapter to chapter about all these how all these things are linked into us crossing over into our new normal. So, what are some examples of these things, these few things that we need to let go of. So some examples can be um, a, a relationship that, you know, just doesn't feel right, but you also know it doesn't, um, it's, it, it doesn't feel right or sometimes sound right. 
um, but you don't sever it, you don't cut it off because it'll hurt too much or it'll be too chaotic. It can also be an addiction or a bad sinful habit. Um, or maybe God is simply just nudging you to 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 do something um, else with your life vocationally or just calling you to do something. And, you know, you're just continually saying, oh, God, what about the income? God, the time, God, the sacrifice, God, the financial security. Um, you know, the catch is. The, the the provision rarely comes first. The author actually says it here. That that usually the provision rarely comes first. That we often we're presented with opportunities to cut off some things that feels vital to us. These things they feel important to us. They feel um um necessary to us. Even some some things Sometimes that feels meaningful to us in our minds. It feels meaningful. It feels like the most important things. And as a result, we fear. We become afraid that, that by, by breaking away from these things, by severing them, by cutting these things off, by, by breaking it off, we ourselves will break apart or break down. Or by losing this thing or this person, we fear that we will become lost ourselves. And in this reality, fear ends up replacing faith. And before we move on, I, I just want to say that when you find yourself in such circumstances, when it's time to shed, when it's time to purge, when it's time to cut off, and you feel like, you're the one being cut. You're the one being hurt. I beg you to remember prayer. And most importantly, praying with scripture. So in Philippians um, chapter 4 verse 7. In the NLT New Living Translation. It says, then you will experience God's peace. Which exceeds anything we can understand. Anything you can understand. His peace will guard your heart and minds, both heart and minds, as you live in Jesus Christ. So when you are in, in that place where you feel like fear is overtaking your faith, remember that you have this amazing source of power, this amazing source of strength, this amazing source of comfort that is available to you. It is available to each of us, to each of God's children. Trust. Lean on his peace, trust in his peace that exceeds all understanding, that transcends all understanding, and it will guard your heart and your mind. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He sees the larger picture, the bigger picture. He knows the end from the beginning. And he has assured us, he has assured you that he will be there for us. He will be there for you to provide so when we say that we, for example, if we have to, to, to cut off one thing, to, to go on an assignment that God has put in our path, that God has sent, sent us on, and we fear God, what about the income, the time, the sacrifice, the financial security, what would people say, all these humanly thoughts, remember that. He that started the work will finish it, that he will provide, that he will be there to provide. And you will see this provision. You will see this peace, if it's peace you need, if it's provision, if it's strength. You will see him provide all this. After you have made the cut. None of these will happen unless and until you make the cut. In fact, when you put your faith in Christ, God commissions himself to protect and provide and care for you. In Philippians 4.19, in an NLT, again, the New Living Translation, it says, And this same God 
who takes care of me, who takes care of you, will supply all your needs. He will supply all my needs. He will supply all our needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ. God always provides for his children, though often it is not in the way we expect or hope. The challenge is for us to see his provision and care, even when it is different than we expect. See? It's to see his provisions. It's to see him. It's to see his hand, even when it is different than we expect. But he will provide, rest assured, nevertheless, he will provide. So let's go to page 75 as we continue to read. I hope everyone has their books in front of them. From page 75, we are going to be reading the last paragraph. We are going to be going into the last paragraph on page 75. And it says, God rarely sends what you need while you're hanging on to something you know you don't need. Remember what I said last week about, or a few weeks ago, but I did reference it last week again, about letting go and purging yourself to create space for something new. Letting go of the past to create space for something new in the present and the future not living in your past so you can live in expectancy of the future and live in the present. If you have an unhealthy habit in your life that you think you can't live without, you can't wait until something better comes along to fill the void. You have to sever the cord first. You have to sever the cord first. First. You have to sever that first and trust that God will provide on the other side. There is no getting around the risk involved. You don't get to half cut and then wait and see. This cutting away is the hardest step of obedience, but it cannot be skipped. So you have to sever the cord first and trust that God will provide on the other side. If God commands you to sever the cut, if he commands you to do something, to say something, or to not do something, you have to do that first and not dilly-dally and I'm just going to wait and see the provisions first before I obey. As Christians, as children of God, our first task, our first mission is to obey is to trust and obey. Obey the command first and trust that God will see us through, that he will give us the strength, that he will provide. So we have to sever the cord first, which is where our obedience comes in. This is where we have to obey and then trust that God will, will provide on the other side. You know, like that trust and obey song and they say, trust and obey. Because there's no other way. You know that song? We, that's our part. To trust and obey. And I, I, you know, sometimes being obedient is not the easiest thing. If, even though it's, it's mainly our part to trust God. We have to trust Him before the cuts. We have to trust Him in the cuts. We have to trust Him through the cuts. We have to trust Him with the cuts. Obey, trust and obey. The cutting itself is a step of obedience. It may not be easy, but this is a step of obedience in its own. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 32 and 33 in the message version, it says, So be very careful to act exactly as God commands you. Don't veer off to the right and don't veer off to the left. Walk straight, straight down the road God commands so that you have a good life 
and live a long time in the land that you are about to possess. It doesn't say walk in obedience to all that the Lord commands so that you can have a terrible life and pass out before getting to the other side. That's not what it says. When we obey, when we obey the commands and we don't veer off to the right, we don't veer off to the left, we don't veer off in any other direction except straight down the road that God has commanded us. It says here, our, our, our promise is to live a good life, a long life, in the land that we are about to possess, in the other side that God is taking us to. When we get there, he will provide this good life, this long life. So when we, we trust and obey the Lord, when we just take him at his word, when we just rest upon his promise, he will deliver. He always delivers. And again, to stress on another point, in Deuteronomy, this verse, in the message verse, it says, don't veer off to the right or to the left. You know, sometimes we do that. I did mention that sometimes being obedience can be hard because sometimes we do veer off to the right or to the left we 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 put off obeying we 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 even sometimes we don't completely disobey we just put it off we put off obedience we delay obedience you know delayed obedience is still disobedience do you think about that there is just being disobedient and just not doing at all. And then there is delayed disobedient. Delayed disobedience is when we think our priorities are more important than what God is asking us to do. As Christians, it's easy to delay obedience. Sometimes we just know the right thing to do, but we don't want to do it. So for all the parents watching, um, when you tell your kids to do something, you, you expect them to obey, right? Let me know in the chat. It, when you tell your kids to do something, you expect them to obey, right? Now imagine if a parent tells a child to do something and he or she says, I'll think about it. Imagine telling your two-year-old or your five-year-old to do something and then I'll think about it, mommy, daddy. So when God tells us something, he expects us to obey. Delayed obedience to God is still disobedience. And delayed obedience also has its own consequences. It also has its own complications. Because when we say, well, I, 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 I wasn't disobedient. I, I didn't say no that I wasn't going to do it. I, I, I ended up doing it anyway. This also comes with its own complications that can complicate our lives and can end up having its own painful circumstances that our obedience would have avoided. I mean, delayed disobedience definitely, definitely complicated the lives of the Israelites, you know, with God's command that their ancestors um, made to circumcise every male that they just didn't follow. Just not yet. Joshua's generations didn't follow it. But when they capped at Gilgal, which means rolling away, the past caught up to them. So we go from disobedience or delayed disobedience to being fully obedient when what is important to God becomes important to us this is how we make that change that 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 transformation from going from disobedience or delayed disobedience because we 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 should try we we should we must go at god's first command so when we, we go from disobedience or delayed disobedience to being fully obedient, when we begin to understand, when we begin to fulfill, when we, we begin to accept that what is important to God becomes important to us. 
So we we rearrange our priorities. We or reorganize our priorities. For the Israelites, Gilgal became a place of reordering their priorities to align with God's priorities. So as children of God, this is something we must do. We must align our priorities with God's priorities. So let's continue to read on page 77. And you got, let me know in the chat, guys, about if you have any prayer requests, any testimonies, um, or any verses that you you want to share to inspire all those who are watching now or those who will watch later how what verse do you run to when you hear from the lord to do something uh, to encourage yourself to 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 fight disobedience or that encourages you to be obedient to the lord to the word of god what can you share a verse in the chat or even send us an email if you don't feel comfortable sharing it in the chat. Let us know. What is that verse that you run to to encourage you to be obedient to the Lord? Or or to to an assignment or to something that he's placed on your heart? Please feel free to share that. It'll be encouraging to me. It'll be encouraging to those watching. It'll be encouraging to those who will watch later. Um... So let's open up our book to page 77. We're still on this book, page 77. And we're going to be reading from the third paragraph. From the, yes, page 77. And it says, As we saw in the previous chapter, God told the people to follow the Ark of the Covenant right towards the flooding river. God seems to use counterintuitive measures to teach us to trust divine initiatives over our most basic human instincts. But I think his choice is arbitrary. I don't but I don't think his choice is arbitrary at all. In Joshua 5 9, God says, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. That's why to this day, that location is called Gilgal, which means a rolling away. A rolling away. Remember that. A rolling away. Gilgal, the place where God dealt with Israel's long delayed obedience, is also where God dealt with his people's shame. We know more and more now about how shame affects us, not just psychologically, but also physically. Shame produces hiding, and secrets kill us. The work of popular authors such as Ed Welch has brought the topic of shame into our public discourse. We are just beginning to understand how shame can affect the body, and even be stored in the body through multiple generations. Wow. Our bodies do not forget things. Hmm, we're going to come back to this later, okay? At Gilgal, God forced his people to confront their past and bring the truth of their disobedience into the light. Without this bold and courageous act, this generation will be condemned to repeat the same mistakes. In a very public act of disobedience, the people of God were breaking the cycle of disobedience and shame. They were resetting the entire story. Yes, there would be pain involved in this cutting away. But note that Gilgal was not named as the place of pain, but the place where their shame was rolled away. So let's go back to the last, the previous paragraph, the last few lines, where the author says, we are just beginning to understand how shame can affect the body and even be stored in the body through multiple generations. Our bodies do not forget things. Our bodies do not just squash shame. It doesn't just evaporate it away. It doesn't forget. It stays in. It stays stored in. It stays locked in. And it manifests itself in many, many different ways. 
But we see here that at Gilgal, yes, their shame was dealt with there, but it was also the point where their shame was rolled away. It was a, 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 a place of redemption for them where that shame was brought out, where the light exposed that shame, that darkness, and it was cast out. It was rolled away. So sometimes I feel like when we go through things with the Holy Spirit, when we walk through things with God, and we 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 tend to label certain places as this is where I broke down, this is where 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 I lost myself. That same place can also be where you find yourself. Because when you break down with God, you're not just breaking down, you're breaking forth. Because like I always say, you don't hurt like the rest of the world hurts. You don't break like the rest of the world breaks. You don't break down, you break forth, you break up. You're going up, you're leveling up. He's purging those things. He's taking them away. He's casting them away. He's rolling them away rolling you know when 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 something rolls you're not exerting so much force over it it's simply just rolling just a tug and it's gone it's it's it, it's gone so he's rolling their shame away so gilgal was not just a place of destruction or of pain or something or somewhere that they're never going to speak about again. It became a place of redemption. And I don't know where your faith walk is right now with the Holy Spirit. I don't know what 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 valleys you're crossing, what rivers you're crossing, what your Gilgal is right now. But as you lean in and as you trust and obey and as you go through whatever it is, the crushing depressing I just want you to know that that will not be the place of your breaking down but that will be the place for you to break forth in Jesus name so we need to face our shame in the presence of God in the presence of Jesus Christ we 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 this we need to face this with him and allow him to heal us we cannot think shame away. We cannot act it away. We cannot feel it away. Our bodies don't forget things. Our minds don't forget things. These things, they manifest themselves in different ways, like I've already said. Shame is the very thing that Jesus came to heal. Whether we are conscious of it or willing to admit it, we are all in need of that healing. And it says here in page 78, that God is not a monster who delights in watching you suffer. On the contrary, God is absolutely, relentlessly committed to seeing you whole, complete, without shame, and not being sabotaged by your past. So this is another reason why we need to, to, to deal with this shame. Why it needs to come out. Because... It says here, God is committed to not seeing us being sabotaged by our past, to not seeing us crucify ourselves in the future because of our past. That's what Gilgal is all about. God will let the past catch up with you, not so you can be conquered by it, but so you can confront it and make things right. So he is not, God is not a villain that will send your past to haunt you and break you and destroy you and, and just catch up with you to, to have it conquer you. No, it's so you can confront it and make things right. So you can move on blamelessly in freedom and never be held back by whatever it is ever again. And this is an important, very, very, very important part of our faith walk. Is dealing with the past, not just by yourself, but with God. There is no getting around it. There is no getting around it. The cutting away of something has been attached to us. 
that has been attached to us can be excruciating at first. Cutting away something that I said that we, we sometimes feel is necessary, important, vital, or even meaningful to us can be excruciating at first. It can hurt. We might face a kind of detoxification of spirit, soul, and body that will cause a temporary scream, a temporary tear, a temporary mourning. But that temporal affliction is only for the sake of long-term healing. This temporary affliction, the temporary scream, the temporary suffering is not for temporary relief. It's not for temporary healing. This is a healing for the long term. This is the healing for the future. This is a healing for the rest of your life. It's not just a, a quick stop of relief to feel good today and, and go back to suffering tomorrow. This is a healing that will manifest throughout your lifetime. It's a freedom that will manifest throughout your lifetime. A freedom that will manifest in the long term. But the temporal affliction is not only for the sake of long-term healing, of making things right, such as when David prays in Psalm 51, let the bones that you have broken rejoice. It reminds me of a doctor setting a broken bone, which is painful but necessary. For proper healing. I don't know any of you that are watching. If you've broken a bone ever, please let us know in the chat. If you've ever broken a bone, if you've ever also had that bone reinserted or fixed again, it was an it is a necessary pain that you have to go through for proper healing. And such is the same when God walks in and wants us to deal with our past or whatever baggage we are carrying. It is necessary to go through your Gilgal. It is necessary. So, let's continue reading because I see we're running out of time. There's so much in this book. I feel like we can just study it for hours and hours on out. So let's continue reading from the same page, page 79, paragraph 2. It could also be said that Gilgal is a place of separation. Sometimes the thing you need to be separated from, the thing you need to sever is not external but internal, which means it, it can come from within. Sometimes our biggest enemies are not the ones outside, but they can also be internal within us. It could be an attitude of pride or self-indulgence. It could be a lingering racial prejudice that you don't want to admit even to yourself. It could be an old grudge, a slight you have hidden away deep inside and harbored for years that has slowly fermented into bitterness. Some things you have attached to that are not things that God can bless. And they have no place in the land God is calling you into now. Gilgal is a place of letting things go. Letting go of things you don't need. Letting those things go. There are things you weren't meant to carry with you anyway. So we're going to stop here for a moment and really reiterate this. And I'm going to read again. These things, some things you have attached to, are not things God can bless. And they have no place in the land God is calling you into now. They have no place in the land that God is calling you into now. Gilgal is a place of letting go of things you don't need. There are things you weren't meant to carry with you anyway. Some of your attachments have no place in the land that, call, that God is calling you into now. Your pride, even your, your, your depression, your self-indulgence, whatever it may be. Some of these things, I'm sorry to say, serve no purpose into your new normal, into this new season, into this new land. Some of these things are meant to be severed. Some of these things are meant to be purged. Some of these things are meant to be 
dropped. Some of these things are meant to be let go of. They can't follow you and they shouldn't follow you into the new land. You weren't meant to carry them with you anyway. You weren't meant to carry your pride or your anxiety or your depression or or anything that the enemy wants to use to sabotage you into, into the bright future that God has placed for you. You're not meant to carry that with you anyway. It's not yours to carry. It's things that you don't need. You, you don't need it into the new season of your life. So whatever it is, as in the end of this, as we pray, add this to your prayer. I'm not meant to carry this, God. I give it to you. Because this new phase you're taking me, this new level, I don't need it. I don't need it. I'm dropping it off, God. I'm giving it to you. I'm letting it go. Let's go to the next page. And hopefully we can keep time. And we'll have some time for prayer in the end. Um... Because I have a few questions for you guys as usual. Some questions for reflection and just a time for us to all pray together. Um, so we're on page 80 now. Page 80, 80. And we're just going to go on and read the first paragraph. And then we're going to close for prayer. It says, When you are in Gilgal and you're cutting away the thing, the relationship, or substance you thought you needed so desperately it might feel as if you aren't going to make it you might feel as if you can't breathe without that person you can't think without that person you can't eat without that person or substance or a thing it might feel as if you're not going to make it but take heart Gilgal is not the place where you die. Gilgal is not the place where you die. Whatever the enemy is telling you, that without that person, you're going to die, it is not true. Without that substance, you're going to die, it is not true. Without that thing, drugs, money, whatever it is, that you're going to die, it's not true. It is not true. It's the place where your reproach dies where your shame dies, where your addiction dies, where your bitterness dies, where your guilt dies. So it is not where you die, but it is where that thing in you that is holding you back dies. It is where we bury it. It is where we say goodbye to it. So Gilgal is not a burial place. It's not a funeral home for you. It is a, is, it is a burial place for your reproach. For your shame, for your guilt, for whatever it is that you're letting go. That is where you drop it. So you are not dropping there. That thing in you that you're letting go of, that you're purging, is being dropped there. It's the place where the last remnants of the old life, the unhealthy you, are cut away. So you can fully inhabit this new land and journey into your new normal. So... As I already said, Gilgal is not the place where you break down. It is not the place where you stay down. It is the place where whatever you're holding, whatever you're dropping off, whatever you cut away is set down, is set forth. So you can fully inhabit the new land and journey into your new normal. It is the place where you remove the shackles, where you remove the chains, where you remove the bondage, whatever it is, addiction, whatever it is, anxiety, whatever it is, a toxic relationship, a toxic job, whatever it is, the fear of not of 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 of, of not answering the call that God has called you to, whatever it is, Gilgal is the place that you remove it. That you break free from it. That you let it go. Because it cannot and it must not follow you into your new normal. You don't need it there. It serves no purpose there. It serves no purpose in your present. It serves no purpose in your future. So we're just going to stop right here. Because I want us to have some time for prayer. And as we enter into this time of prayer and reflection, we're going to go into the study guide. And if you have it, 
if you can open up to page 38. Um, and I'm just going to read a few things from here. And it says that, as I was saying before, how some of the things that you're attached to are not things that God can bless or things that have no place in the land that God is calling you to now. Because Gilgal is a place of letting go of things that you don't need. There are things that you weren't meant to carry with you anyway. So I'm just going to read a few things from here. Page 38. And he says, here is a list of things you might need to separate from. So I'm going to read out these things. And as I read them, I want you to just close your eyes. If you can. And just think and meditate slowly but prayerfully. And just note which one of these things you feel a deep resonance with, you feel a deep resonance for, and even a deep resistance. Because that can also tell you a lot. That can also tell you where and how you need to pray, what you need to pray for, where you need the Holy Spirit. To, to reveal to you things about. So let's just go into a time of prayer and reflection now. Shame about your past. Insecurity. Is this something you need to separate from? An altitude of pride and self-indulgence. An addiction to a substance or to technology. A lingering racial prejudice. A slight or resentment you have hidden away deep inside, harbored for years. A relationship that is toxic or where you are hanging on too tightly. Hurtful words, labels that have been spoken over you in the past. The need to be in control. Father God, I just thank you for this time together. I thank you for this time of fellowship. Father God, I thank you that your word has revealed things to us. Things that we cannot normally reveal to ourselves, oh God. We thank you for shining light on every darkness, for exposing every darkness, Father. So as we listen to these things that we are supposed to drop off, that we are supposed to let go of, that we are supposed to, to break free of, Father God, and break out of, Holy Spirit, I just pray for a supernatural piercing right now in everyone watching, in everyone listening. Let your light shine in them and reveal and expose and diminish every darkness right now in the name of Jesus. As your presence falls on your children, as your presence enters that room, as your presence enters that car, as your presence enters that classroom, that workroom, that office, wherever your children are joining, wherever they're listening now, oh God. Father God, I just pray that it is a time of revelation for your children. It is a time for them to be breaking free from things that are shameful in their past. Any shame that they're carrying with them, Father God, we just pray that they are letting go of it right now, Father God, because it does not belong with them in their new journey, in their new normal, oh God. We just pray that every shame, Father God, will be taken away in the name of Jesus. Every insecurity, every anxiety, every fear right now, Father God, we cast it out in the name of Jesus. It does not belong with us. Fear does not belong with us. It does not belong with us. It will not follow us anymore. An attitude of pride or self-indulgence, Father God. We remove it in the name of Jesus. Father God, help us. Help us keep our eyes on you. Help us focus on you. Help us not focus on us, Father God. We pray for more of you and less of us. More of your voice and less of our voice. More of your words and less of our words in the name of Jesus. Just more of you and less of us in the name of Jesus. Addiction to a substance or to technology. 
Father God, every spirit of addiction, we cancel right now in the name of Jesus. We rebuke in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of the addiction holding us down, holding us back, holding us just down, Father God, that is imprisoning us, Father God. We break free from the shackles of every addiction. Whatever kind of addiction it is, Father God, we give it to you right now. Wherever your children are crying out for freedom, to be free, to be broken free, Father God, meet everyone at every point right now. Whatever form the addiction is taking, whether technology, whether any pills, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is, Father God, even addiction to any toxic relationships, any toxic Partner, oh God, Father God, we just pray for you to visit that one right now. Wherever they are crying out for you, wherever they are yearning for you, Father God, just visit them right now and we declare them to be free in the name of Jesus. Any, ling any lingering racial prejudice, Father God, any resentment, any prejudice, any discrimination, Father God, any resentment that is causing bitterness, that is causing hardship, oh God, that is causing our hearts to be like stoned, Father God, wherever it is, Father God, we pray that you remove it in the name of Jesus. Any slight or resentment that we have hidden away deep inside and harbored for years, anything that we are not willing to let go, anything that we are not willing to forgive, anything that we feel with our humanly bodies that we cannot forgive, oh God, today we give it to you in the name of Jesus. Today we give you that slight. Today, Father God, we give you that resentment, that bitterness. We lift it off us right now in the name of Jesus. We lift it off us in the name of Jesus and we free ourselves, Father God. I pray for peace. I pray for calm, Father God. I pray, Father God, for whatever. If it's a spirit of forgiveness that needs to be replaced, Father God, let it dwell within in the name of Jesus. Because it is not by our strength, but it is by you, O oh God, that we can forgive, that we can love, that we can be free, O oh God. So whatever it is, Father God, whatever difficulty, whatever resentment, whatever bitterness that we have been holding on to, even knowingly or unknowingly, consciously or unconsciously, Father God, reveal it today and remove in the name of Jesus. Reveal and remove in the name of Jesus. A relationship that is toxic, Father God, or where we are hanging on too tightly. Father God, teach us how to love properly. Teach us how to be loved properly. Whatever toxic relationship, whatever toxic romantic relationship, whatever toxic family relationship, toxic work relationship, toxic study, re academic relationship, whatever kind of relationship it is, Father, right now we just pray, Father God, that you take control. You begin to minister to your children wherever they are, Father God, about the right way to love, about the right way to be loved, about their value, about their worth, Father God. You will help them to be out of of every unhealthy, every damaging situation, relationship in the name of Jesus, Father God. Take us away, out, take us out from every situation, oh God. Every situation that is mentally draining, that is emotionally draining, that is financially draining, oh God. Save your children, Father God. Save us from every toxic relationship. Set us free, oh God. Help your children in the name of Jesus. Hurtful words, labels that have been spoken over you, over us in the past. Father God, you will lift us above every voice, every doubt, every negativity. We pray right now, Father God, that you lift your children above every voice and you silence those voices. Any negative voice, every hurtful voice, every voice of doubt. Father God, even every demonic voice that has been spoken over our lives before we were born, while we were born, even now, Father God. We remove it and we silence it in the name of Jesus. We silence every tongue speaking out against us in the name of Jesus. You will lift us up, Father God. Lift us up a voice above the voices, above the doubts, Father God. And remind us. That you are the author and the finisher. And you are the king of kings. And you are the lord of lords. And that the only thing that matters is what you say. Is who you say we are, Father God. Is who you say we are. It is our identity in you. It is our faith in you. That you are our rock. And that we will rest on your word and your word alone. We will trust in you and not in man. In the name of Jesus, Father God. Remind us that only thing that matters is you. You should be at our center. You should be in our top list. You should be number one in our lives. You should be preeminent, Jesus. 
the need to be in control. The need to be in control. Father God, just remind us that we are not in control of our destinies. We are not our author and our finisher, that you are. That all glory belongs to you, King of Kings. We are not our beginning and our end, that you are. So today we surrender, Father God. Those who are finding it hard to surrender, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But you trust in him. You lean in. You trust him. You obey him. Surrender everything. Surrender everything. And he will provide. He will protect. He will see you through. He will heal. Always. He is Jehovah always. Rest on him. Lean on him. Father God, for everyone who is struggling for control in different ways, Father God, to control their beginning, their ends. Father God, just remind them today that you are the author and the finisher. You know their name. You know the number of hair on their heads. You know their hearts. That you know them, O oh God. That you are their peace and you are their strength. So Father God, remind us that it is not by our strength or our intelligence or our talents, but it is by what you have put in us. It is by what you have given us, O oh God, that everything we have comes from you and everything we do is for you and through you. Remind us of this, O oh God. Remind us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So, Father God, today I just pray that whatever has stirred up in your people from this time of reflection, whatever has stirred, stirred up in their gut, in their mind, oh God. Father God, I just pray that you know what it is. You know what it is. I may not know what it is, but you know, Jesus. So I just pray that you touch your children where they need you the most. You reveal every darkness. You reveal and cancel and replace with your lights. Let your light prevail in the name of Jesus. Help them with your comfort when they feel like things are too scary to let go of. When they feel like they cannot breathe because they have let go of this person. Remind them with your comfort, Father God. Embrace them in your loving, warming arms. And let them know that you are their peace and you are their comforter. And you will give them a sound mind. That things may hurt now. It may pain now. But they are not breaking down. They are breaking forth. That they are not breaking apart, but they are breaking through. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. All this we pray for. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you guys so much for joining today. I love you all. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you all being here. Um, please don't forget to join us next week as we continue chapter 5. Um, in new normal, the same time, 12 noon, Rome time, every Thursdays, Thursday Connect. And also don't forget to join us every Wednesdays at 7 p.m. CET for our Wednesday Warfare Prayer. And also don't forget we're going to be having Sunday services. Remember on campus we have two services, 10 a.m. and 11.45 a.m. Please don't forget to register. You have to register online at our icfroom.org website. Um, all COVID protocols will be followed if you're general on campus. If not, please join us online, 11.45 a.m. CET. So thank you all. Remember to keep checking our social media platforms and our website for all our upcoming events. We have so many amazing things coming in the month of February. It is completely loved. That is our theme. So please don't miss out on this opportunity to just feel the complete and absolute fullness of God's love. Thank you all. Have a blessed day.